I'm going to ask you a question. Have, have any of you ever been arrested? Uh, have, have you ever been uh, beaten? Have you ever been in a riot? Have you ever been stoned? Uh, not that kind of stoned. I mean the kind where they throw rocks at you uh, <laughs> until they think you're dead. Well, all of those things had happened to the Apostle Paul. All of those things. And not because he had done anything wrong, at least not by our standards, but because he wanted to share the good news of Jesus Christ with other people. God had changed his life. Christ had changed his life in such a way that he was driven to share that good news uh, with others as well. And sometimes that even got him into trouble. Once Paul was teaching about Jesus in Jerusalem, and uh, people got so incensed at him that uh, a riot began to form. And for his own good, he was, uh, he was taken by Roman soldiers uh, so that he wasn't killed and taken out of the city and brought here to Caesarea Maritima, Caesarea by the sea, which was the seat of Roman government in, in the first century Palestine. He was brought here for his protection and he was, he was uh, kept in custody here uh, for, and it turns out to be, for almost two years. Uh, Felix was the governor at the time and Felix uh, kept Paul in custody. We're not sure exactly why he kept him for that long, uh, but uh, the rumor is that uh, Felix was trying to extort some money, hoping that Paul maybe would pay something or that Paul's friends would pay something to get him out of custody while he was, uh, while he was in custody here. But that never happened, and so uh, he was left here for two years. Felix was so uh, corrupt and inept, eventually he was recalled from his governorship here uh, back to Rome, and eventually, uh, kind of an ironic thing, he, w he was eventually uh, expelled from the, 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 from the country uh, himself. He was uh, uh, fr from, from, uh, banished from Rome himself for his uh, uh, inept uh, governorship. Uh, Festus is the one who takes over for, for uh, Felix here in Caesarea. Again, remember Caesarea is the home both of Pontius Pilate and of, a, uh, you've heard of that guy, also of a guy named Cornelius who was a Roman soldier. If it hadn't been for Cornelius and Peter and their, their uh, uh, experience where Peter goes to Cornelius' home, non-Jew, uh, and, and, uh, and heals his servant. Remember the story from, uh, from, the, from the Bible. Uh, and Peter gets this, uh, this uh, vision from God that anyone, uh, not, not just Jew, but anyone is acceptable to God who does what is right and, come, and comes to him. That happened right here, not some other place, but that happened here. So you and I, in other words, might not be Christians there. I mean, we might not have known about the faith. We might not have been, been uh, invited into the faith if it hadn't been for what happened right here where you're standing. Not some other place, but right here. Okay, so go back to Felix. Felix leaves Paul in jail until he's, and, and, and then Paul is still in custody here until Felix is uh, 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 re removed and uh, Festus becomes the new governor. Well, Co Festus has a new problem now. Uh, he's coming in and he has this prisoner named Paul, and he doesn't know what to do with him. He's not sure what Paul's done to deserve being a prisoner. Uh, Paul has appealed his case all the way to, to Caesar, and he has the right to do that because he's a Roman citizen, remember. But, but, uh, but Festus doesn't want to just send Paul to Rome without some kind of a letter saying, this is why I did it. I mean, he's going to look like an idiot himself, right? And so uh, he's trying to figure out what in the world, you know, what, what can I do and how, what can I write to the emperor of, uh, when I, to send it with Paul so he can get a hearing in Rome. Uh, Herod Agrippa and his sister Bernice come to visit. It wasn't unusual for emperors to visit one another or for, for rulers to visit one another. And so they come to visit Festus. He's the new, new governor here. And he's tell, he's, he explains the problem. And so... Uh, so they said, well, we'll listen to Paul and we'll help you decide what the problem is and, and whether or not he deserves to be punished and whether we should send him to, to Rome and so forth. So right over, some archaeologists say right <laughs> over in this area, right here, right here, this is the, the ancient uh, ruins of, of, of Herod's palace, was an auditorium room. And, and right in this very spot, you know, just 50 yards from where, 50 feet from where you're standing right now, the Apostle Paul stood right here. And this is where in the book of Acts, starting with, with uh, chapter 26, the Apostle Paul gave his defense to Festus and Agrippa and uh, to Bernice. Some of you remember that story, one of the uh, dramatic stories of the book of Acts. And there he tells about his own conversion and he tells about how Christ has changed his life and how he's a new person. And, uh, 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 and he tells his whole story about his conversion on the road to Damascus. And they hear the story and then Paul does something no one expected him to do, an amazing thing. He turns to the king, Agrippa, and he invites him to be a Christian too. He says, Agrippa, I know that you are familiar with the ancient prophecies. You believe, don't you? And remember Agrippa's response. He says, are you so quickly wanting me to become a Christian? And the Apostle Paul says, 
whether quickly or not, I wish you could be what I am, except for these chains. That all happened, not some other place, right here, 50 feet from where you're standing. When I think about that, when I think about the Apostle Paul, two things come to my mind. First of all, I think about how much we owe those bold Christians who continued to tell the story, even under such great persecution. And, and we know that from this very harbor, the ship carrying the Apostle Paul to Rome, where he would never, he would be, uh, two years later, would be martyred, killed in Rome. He left from this port right over here on a ship. And I think about that, and I think about the price that he paid for his faith, and you and I probably would never have heard the faith. We would never have known the good news of Jesus Christ if it hadn't been for those early Christians like Paul, who were willing to share their faith in front of, uh, or in the face of, of grand opposition. How much we owe them and how grateful we can be for those Christians who've gone before us, people like the Apostle Paul. The second thing that comes to my mind is I'm very humbled when I think about that. These who are willing to give their lives for the good news, these who, for whom Christ had meant so much for them, they were willing to, to tell their story to anyone who would listen, even a king. And yet, sometimes I hesitate just to walk across the street and invite my neighbor to church. I'm very humbled by these uh, Christian forebears who gave everything so that you and I might know the Lord. That's a great model and example for us. May we be a little more like the Apostle Paul and those early Christians for whom Christ had meant, meant the world. And they were willing to share that with everyone that they met. Kings, commoners, and everyone in between.